Da hero everybody, my name is Level 100 Mudkip, and I am finally bringing you the bonus episode to Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy. It has been a couple months, and um, I recently got a new gaming PC, well, a new PC in general, and it's been taking me quite a while to adjust to it and get everything working on the uh, on the video software and everything that I use. So, uh, without further ado, let's just head into this bonus video. So what this is, is right off the bat, I just want to say this is going to be a lot of reading. So if you guys want to watch this, you don't have to. I'm just doing it for my own satisfaction. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be reading all of the descriptions to every single monster in the game, along with all the jewels that we collected as the mummy. These are things that we've turned in over the course of the game that um, I just felt exceeded the 100% point. So let's start off. Skeletal Axeman. Rumored to be former warriors of an ancient dark Egyptian army, members of the undead, their origin is unknown. Now rarely seen in groups larger than three, in the past they formed whole battalions. Alright. Half Brute. The name Half Brute under, uh, understates the nature of these aggressive two legged monsters, predominantly found in desert regions. A descendant of the Full Brutes, a decibel lizard now wild, widely acknowledged to be extinct. Uh, just right off the bat, I'm going to say I haven't read any of these ever before, so it might take me a while to, you know, get the words and everything right. Slim Burble. Spotting, sporting spindlier limbs when compared to other burbles, the Slim Burble is capable of laying eggs with alarming frequency. Living in warrens built at the base of cliff faces, it's fiery, I think that's fiery, uh, fiery temperament derives from a diet that primarily consists of freshly flowing lava. Interesting. Goofy lizard. The goofy, li goofy lizard's behavior implies the complete lack of common sense, matched only by the apparent lack of coordination. The most popular domesticated animal is... Yup. Read the sign. Cobra. A hooded and highly poisonous snake. The cobra commonly makes its home in, the, in dark and secluded areas, surprising many unsuspecting explorers. Almost a bull. Often found in Heliopolis, the almost a bull's defense mechanism sees it shrink in order to present a smaller target for any attacker. A, a unique breeding mistake led to uh, one hand being replaced with a third horn, almost an evol evolutionary abnormality. An animality, whatever that word was. <laughs> squirt. The squirt is a shy, easily frightened creature. The high value of the squirt comes as a result of being immune to capture Huh, interesting. Cyclops. Named so named so for its single eye. The bi this biped is capable of charging bolts of fire, teleportation, and duplication. Their combination of skin and hair color has sometimes seen them confused with a certain root vegetable. I've never mentioned that before. They do look like a they do look like a pepper or something. Anyway, um, sea turtle. The sea turtle is a solitary creature fond of the open ocean. Its large size is a result of its immense lifespan. The oldest sea turtle to have been found was aged in uh, excess of three centuries. Smiling bird. This little critter is one of the less harmful members of the verbal family, having lost the explosive properties indicative of its species. Their powerful, ho powerful horns can shatter rock, although their lack of coordination less lessens the threat uh, threat this would normally pose. Spitting toad. The so-called spitting toad got its name from its tendency to swallow first think later all right <laughs> all right uh maybe i should have read some of these through first anything that is not to the toad's rather picky taste is sped out quite forcefully interesting Whoa. big bowl the hammer wielding monstrosity is re renowned for its bad temper such as the size of its weapon it's it acts as a shield without the need for a defensive pose Geb. Sharing the name of the ancient earth god Gebs, uh, earth god, Gebs used to be peaceful creatures. Nowadays, they are a little more than 
obedient muscle for the fearsome gift who is now dead. Spinefish. Spinefish. Spinefish's deceptively beautiful display fins hide deadly poisonous spines which it uses to fend off would-be aggressors. The spinefish is an extremely territorial animal and is commonly used by the upper classes in their defensive mode. So that's this room done. Now, uh, some of these monsters were already in here, like others were, others were donated. Um, the alert spider was already in here, and a, f a few other things, a few of these monsters are already in here, like the mummy eagle, we can't, we can't catch that. So anyway, let me continue on here. Rat. A large rodent well known for its ability to spread diseases, often found in sewers and other poorly sanitized areas. The name Rat is also used to signify a treacherous or untrustworthy person. Horus. Mummy Chihuahua. A Chihuahua is a smooth-coated dog of diminutive st stature. The mummification process makes their undead counterpart very aggressive. A popular pet of a former pharaoh, they went to the tomb with their master. Armadillo. These were ticky. These peculiar waddling quadru qu quadrupeds normally walk along at a slow pace their hard shell doubles up as a weapon when spinning along the ground certain popular children's tales claim their origins as the union of the hedgehog and tortoise oh that's weird i thought they would explain like the electricity and the fire capability it's not skeletal spider one of the most unique looking members of its species the skeletal spider stands out with the unusual ver vertical growth of its spine. Native to Uruk, when their fleshless bodies are little affected by the scorching heat. Nose Needler. The Nose Needler certainly does needle, provoking their prey until the, its judgment is clouded by anger. Burrowing through soft soil at a great speed, they emerge briefly and throw abrasive rocks at an, en at an enemy before going underground once again and repeating the process. Shellcrow. A shy herbivorous reptile re renowned for spending most of its life retreated inside its shell. Despite being fairly commonplace, excessive cruelty to shell critters have given them protected species status. So, kind of like on the endangered species list. Mummy worm. An undead invertebrate which spits out harmful balls of fire. Rooted to the spot and una unable to burrow, they are sometimes kept as sentries to ward off unwanted visitors. A lot of these have bigger uses than I thought they would. Wasp Spider. One of the slower members of the spider family, the tips of their claws hold a powerful sting. The wasp spider prefers the cool breezes found in coastal regions. Interesting. Read the sign. Spike Spider. Perhaps the smallest member of the spider family, it is swifter than most thanks to its strong legs. The spike spider is a pack hunter, and in groups they will surround their prey and attack from all directions simultaneously. Exopirana. The exopirana's external skeleton makes them incre incredibly resilient. Faster and more intelligent than other types of piranha known, they are undeniably as ugly as the wounds they are known to inflict. Wow. What a bash the poor thing. Piranha. A vicious fish native to a strong and far off land, those found on this continent have the ferocious appetites and their overseas of their overseas counterparts, but are also amphibious. Similar to rats in recent years, the piranha has become an increasing hazard in larger towns. Mummy Eagle. The mummy eagle is one of the biggest birds known to exist. Its great size and strength mean that it can easily pick up people. Their ability has been known to have been exploited by the ancients who used an eagle stone to summon the birds, which is what we did. Sunflower. This perennial plant has been known to live for many centuries. Immobile for the most for most of the time, it springs to life when threatened and fires off three spore attacks simultaneously to virtually guarantee harm befalls any potential threat. Tree creature. The tree, uh, the tree creature is one of the few plants known to have magical abilities for birds. 
It distracts any potential threat with a mesmerizing glow of light which emanates over its head, while underground roots rapidly burst through the ground. Small Frog The small frog originates from the toxic swamplands. As a result, it is very resistant to toxic sub sub whatever that word was, alert spider. The alert spider spends its life above the ground clinging over walls or ceilings. From this high vantage point, it is able to drop down onto unsuspecting prey without drawing attention to itself. And that is the second room done. One more to go, and then we have the jewel collection. And then, uh, that is forever the end of the series. Okay. Electric Eel. The electric eel is quite a docile animal in its natural habitat. However, due to the electric field it creates, any water in which it swims becomes electrified and very dangerous to unsuspecting animals. Chihuahua. A favorite pet of the rich, chihuahuas are very energetic. While the dog-loving community adore chihuahuas, most find their incessant yapping highly irritating. I've had a chihuahua, that is very true. Re there you go. Green giant worm. The largest invertebrate creature known, it is also one of the few carnivorous worms in existence. Green giant worms uniquely fortify the entrances to their subterranean tunnel networks, affording some forewarning as to their presence. Read the Blade Scorpion. This lobster-like arachnid has a very different jointed tail to the regular scorpion, with twice as much potential to harm. As well as carrying a deadly sting as the tail's tip, the blade scorpion's tail itself is just that, a lethal razor-sharp blade capable of scything through armor. Wow. <coughs> oh, little bastard. I don't think you ever see this in the game, ever. Manta Ray. The manta ray's natural habitat is the open ocean. They usually prefer to prey upon small schools of fish, but have been known to attack larger animals if provoked. Yeah, I don't have, I don't think you ever see this thing. I never have. Shuttlecock bird. A shuttlecock bird may only may only be able to fly short distances at a time, but its one leg allows for some powerful hopping. The unique arrangement of feathers around its head make it make it incredibly aerodynamic when launching into the deck. I just now realized it only has one leg. Featherless turkey. Especially bred to enable quick and simple food processing, over the years the featherless turkey has developed a complex. They ram into anyone nearby, seeming, seemingly blaming every everything living they come across for the loss of their plumage. Bitch. Whatever that word is. That thing looks Whoa, it's got teeth that it's beak. <laughs> Interesting. Alright. There we go. Mummy bird. When mummified, bandages were wrapped around the mummy bird's eyes to safeguard against superstition. Okay. As a result, it relies on the sense of hearing to locate prey, leaping with claws extended in the approximate direction of the sound. Is its eyes really covered? Slightly. Let's see a bit of a anyway. Knives cat. A much faster and more deadly relative of the crab hands, possess a uh, possesses a remarkable sense of hearing. While humanoid in shape, you have only you have you have only to see a knife's cat hunting to appreciate where the feline half of its name comes from. Crab hands. A combination of humanoid and shellfish makes up this monster found throughout the land. The gold armor plating adorning the crab hands is permanently wielded to its body and enchanted to allow for growth. Shellfish. Sharpeak. The Sharpeak's slender form makes it a leaf warrior. Is that that word? Are they trying to do lethal? I don't know if that's a typo, typo or not or if that's actually a word. Anyway. And they are well trained in swordsmanship techniques. Dark magic is rumored to be the cause of this usual blend of lizard and bird. I couldn't really tell it was a lizard, to be honest. It looks just bird like. Anyway. Skull Warrior. A powerful ally to the forces of evil, skillful and ruthless fighters. The Skull Worshipper is precisely that. Their dwellings are said to be adorned with skulls by those who have lived to escape. 
skull swordsman, highly trained in many swordsmanship techniques and deadly weapons. Similar to skull worshippers, they too can summon a ghostly skull which drains the soul's, e soul's essence on contact. You never summon skulls, you liar. Last one, guys. Dark worshipper, and my favorite one in the game. Adventurers should approach the shadows of any dungeon with caution, for a dark worshipper may be lurking in the darkness. Said to be the tortured souls of former warriors trapped trapped between our world and the afterlife. Yeah. Alright, so that is it with the monsters. Now we just check out the uh, the six jewels, and that is it for the series, guys. Just head on up here. In the, when you first come here and the jewels are said to be stolen, they say something about a sarcophagus. I don't know if I did this in the series or not, but when you talk to her, she's usually very upset about what happened because uh, Horus or whoever in Urak used her to steal the jewels. And um, when you talk to her after you return them, she says, thank you, thank you so much. Now that all the jewels have been returned, my conscience is finally free of guilt. You are incredible. So when you talk to her at first, she's very upset and she doesn't like to talk to you at all. So I just figured I'd, uh, I'd point that out. So here we go, the jewels. Ownership of this jewel is said to enchant those who carry it with unfailing honesty. The legendary bandit Sipta donated this jewel to the museum before turning himself into the authorities, confessing to over 200 criminal acts. Wow. When quarrying began many centuries ago, the shul was discovered deep within the bowels of the deserts. Convinced of greater wealth, wealth deeper down, the king who ordered the excavation caused the deaths of thousands of slaves. Only after these innocent lives were lost did he concede that no more treasure would emerge from the depths. This is probably my favorite looking jewel. This enchanted cobra-headed jewel was discovered on a battlefield protruding from the chest of a fallen king. Used to deliver the fatal blow in a war that was le that left no survivors. Nothing remains of the tribe who forged it. Let's go this way. I think it went the wrong way. I think it was these three and then those three. Whatever, who cares. Legend tells us that this jewel was encased in a stone that fell from the skies many years ago. While there is little to support this, the crater in which it was discovered does form the shape of the jewel itself. Huh. I wonder if you see that at all in the game. So many people to claim to be the rightful owner to this jewel that, uh, the Jadjet? I am sorry if I butchered that, I have no idea what that is. Uh, Tribunal was held in Thebes for which there was a record number of 312 defendants. So confused uh, was the great Kenbet, who presided over the case. He eventually entrusted it to Abidos Museum, for which his cousin, the mayor, is grateful. Oh yeah, this is the first one. Yeah, I went the wrong way, but whatever. This shoe was kindly donated by Lady Nut. Lady Nut, all right, uh, rena uh, renowned for holding the most extravagant wedding ceremony. The number of guests in attendance exceeded the population of the town in which it was held. Huh, interesting. Well, with that, guys, uh, that has been Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy. I am so sorry that it took so, so long to get this bonus episode out, um, but hey, maybe uh, maybe now that you guys have seen this, it'll make you want to rewatch the series. I don't know. Um, but I really hope you enjoyed. Um, this series was a lot of fun to make, and uh, you can expect um, you can accept you can expect more uploads uh, after this video is put out. So um, until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.